Thanks for joining me today. Got a lovely, lovely video coming up. This one, who remembers the review I did on the Milwaukee Strimmer? This is the M18 Strimmer with the quick lock release system on it. I'll get it down in a moment. I got the one with the strimmer head. You can get the attachments, the chainsaw attachment and the hedge trimmer attachment. I've gone and got the hedge trimmer attachment and the extension pole. So, so it's going to be massive. It's going to be great. Um, here we go. Look, this is the hedge trimmer attachment. Look at those fellas. Now then, I'm going to compare this to the steel pole um, petrol two-stroke cutter which is up there behind the counter i'll get that down in a minute we'll do a full comparison that is a pro tool it's a it's it's a proper industrial tool it's amazing how is the milwaukee m18 going to compare that is the question is this going to be chin set is it going to be up to the job is it going to you know i'm fed up of getting the petrol fumes all over me every time i cut the hedge i come out stinking pulling starting and all that as much as i love it I wanted to give this a go and see how it compares. I've had loads and loads of comments in the description about, um, is this up to a pro sort of tool? Is it is it built to the that kind of specification? Some people have said that it, it the, the batteries um, are not up to the job. Uh, they've got multiple batteries. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Well, we did the streamer review and I was absolutely amazed. It was brilliant, it really was. Let's see how we get on with this one. Let's get it out of the box. So let's have a look at the uh, the pole to start with. Let's get this out the uh, out of the box and see what we get. The numbers on here are, this is the M18 FOPH EXA. So it's the 94 centimeter uh, extension pole. Let's whip that out of the box, see what we get. I'm just really interested in the quality of, of these components. How are they going to fare up to the other one? Um, right then. Well, first things first, that is a really pleasing bit of um, rubber grip there. It's nice, it's tight, it feels good. That is exactly the same head is what was uh, obviously on the uh, the strimmer line. So we know that's good. Cast aluminium, nice grip lock there. So as far as that goes, strong aluminium pole, bearings either end. So it's fully, yeah, really nice bearing inside there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, extension pole, <laughs> it looks pretty good. You get the um, You get the hanger as well there. To uh, if you you clip that in and hang it so it's out the way. All right, let's let get let's get that one out of the way then. That'll do for that. That was pretty straightforward. Let's get into the juicy stuff. Let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at this chappy. This is the M18 FOPH HTA, the hedge trimming attachment. Um, and let's get this one out of the box. Uh -huh. What's it going to be like? Is it going to be really nicely cast in aluminium or is it going to be plastic? Yet? That is my fear. I don't want plastic, I want metal. I want metal. Let's have a look. Uh... I'll have a look. I don't think I don't think there's anything in there. Got some destructions. All that baloney. Let's have a look. Another hanger. Um, uh -huh. oh, okay, okay, okay. Well, we've got a mixture of materials here. We've got a nice grip, again, we've got a little protected to stop you getting crap in your face. Um, got a nice uh, guard there. 
So with these, you pull back on the on the bracket there, and then that should swing round, which is very suits exactly the same as the, the steel one. So we pull on it and then spin it, spin it round, and lock it into position. Feels nice on the mechanism. The gearbox itself is all is nicely cast. So the important bits there, which are the uh, uh, the the metal gearbox, is all cast metal with all the you can see it's the same um, with the bearings all encased. Let's have a look at the blade. Oh, okay, okay. Well, wow, that's a nice little touch. I quite like that. I quite like the. Uh, it's got that beautiful metal. Can you see that metal cap on the end of it there? The reason I say that is because the steel one hasn't got that. And um, I do sometimes when I'm going close, I've got some hedges that grow right into the brick. And when I'm going in, it does bounce off it sometimes. I do catch it. That would stop that. But also, would it stop me cutting right up to the wall? That is the other question. Um, the blade itself looks razor sharp and it, it's it's of a nice thick quality we've got a I'll get the uh, I'll get the micrometer on it and we shall um, uh, test the thickness of the blades with the steel we'll check it and see what the comparison is uh, it looks nice this um, this top plastic um, yeah it looks like it's fiberglass encased uh, plastic there reinforced it's just the handle on the top, so it's not actually structural or the, it won't affect the integrity of the gearbox, which, and it's really solid, it's nice, it's got the uh, serrated back on it. So your first impressions of that, I'm pretty chuffed actually, it's not bad, it's not bad, it's not bad at all. Let's get the steel down, and just have a quick comparison of this part of the machine. Play. This is an this is an absolute monster. It's a it's a fabulous bit of kit. This one here, it's done so much work. It's amazing. It does start very easily. We'll do a weight comparison as well of this complete with the um, against the other one. So again, you pull back on that and you swing that round like so. I just whip off the, the cover there. That reveals the blade on that, which I'm looking at these two now. And okay, so the blades are exactly the same length. We have got they've both got the same length blade in them, which is the first. Uh, well, that's a good point so we're not going to be doing any less work the size of the um the the serrations um to be fair they almost look identical they they look like they're they look like they're identical blades um not a lot in it though very 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 minimal differences there the gearboxes let's have a look at these on the still, it's got a lot more a lot more meat on this top shaft here. The the Milwaukee isn't as robust uh, on the top guide here, uh, for sure. There's a there's a lot more meat around this on the gearbox, it, but it is a it's a heavy it's a heavy bit of kit. Um, but it, it has got a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more going on down here. There's a lot more structure to it on the on the still. Also on the on the steel one, we've got a nice um, uh, grease point there. We can pop that out and pop some grease into the into the, the box there. This one we've got a little um, the Milwaukee's got a little Allen key, which again would be quite difficult to grease into there. It may even be sealed. It might be sealed for life. I'll have to check the instructions for that. There is no information in there about oiling the gearbox. So you have to sort of go, is it a sealed gearbox? Are they not expecting you to, to um, oil it or grease it? Comparing the two from the underside, you can see on the steel one, this is a far bigger uh, arrangement here, the adjuster. We've got, we've got a lot going on there. And also into the back of it, we've got this 
big strong gearbox with six mounting screws on the back the milwaukee one by comparison is it's half the size isn't it it really is a lot smaller um we've got the adjuster plate there it's in a slightly different arrangement but it's um it's a lot smaller by comparison And like I say, we've only got the four screws on the back there, and the thickness of it is is a lot less than than the strength. This is, this is a very very strong unit. Looking at that, there is a lot of difference there. Okay, got the digital caliper here. Let's just check out the thickness of the uh, of the blades. Let's see how these compare. Okay, so that's the that's the Milwaukee there, about five. Yep, five millimetres. No, uh, 2.5. So the, I think the wear probably on this over time, yeah, they are the same. It's going to be five. So the the blades are are pretty much exactly the same as these are brand new. These are a lot of wear. Um, so I think the thickness is identical. You can see the difference in the, the way it's manufactured. This has got, uh, it's uh, got a lot, it's got a thicker, um the red sort of shaft coming down here it's a lot thicker on that the steel one is uh plated and that's quite quite an unusual difference that is that's that's quite a difference in manufacture they both offer a little bit of flex but it's almost like they're using the, the strength of the blades to um to keep it stiff whereas this has got this top plate on it um which is stiffening it up a lot more like I was saying about the end on it, as you can see, there's no metal. There's, this is metal guard on the end of the Milwaukee one. There's no metal guard on the end of the steel. You can get right, right in to the uh, to the wall, and it does sometimes bounce back. But it's it's up to it. It's it's as solid as a rocket. It's a cracking bit of kit. It's not got as quite as much meat on it, the Milwaukee, as the steel one. But that's not to take away from the tool because it's it's a little bit lighter. Does it need to have all that, um, you know, does it need to have so much metal down this end? Have they designed it in such a way as that it's um, strong enough with what they've got there? Obviously, this is a battery powered bit of kit, whereas this one is the petrol powered bit of kit. So there are differences in, uh, you know, in what it's producing, the torque that it's producing and stuff. So uh, we shall see. Let's get this on the, uh, let's get it onto the quick lock motor. So first thing we're going to do is take off the um, the strimmer head. So we just undo the the clamp a little bit, press the button, and pull that out. So that comes apart really, really easily. It's not difficult, which is a good thing. And then we get the new hedge trimmer. We slide that in, and that just clicks into place there. And then we do the clamp up. And that's it, it's ready to go. Quick and easy, wasn't it? It's a good design, it is a good design. Let's get that round there. And uh, so I've got the five amp battery. That is in. Let's give it a bash. Nice. Nice and quiet. Lovely. Weight wise, how is the weight comparison? Okay, so the steel one with a bit of fuel in it weighs in at 7.5 kilograms. The Milwaukee with a battery weighs in at 6.2, oh, considerably lighter. 
There is one thing on the Milwaukee that I feel lets it down. And it lets it down in a bit of a big way because it's something that you, you're in contact with and using all the time. And that is this strap here. The strap itself is nice. You know, I can't fault the strap itself. It's a it's a nice it's a nice padded strap. It's got the logo on it. But look what it clips into. This this ugly horrible thing here. It's got sharp edges on it. It's almost like it's a bit of an afterthought. You look at the still one. It's a delightful looking um sort of it swings, it moves. It's just so much nicer it's a really nice nice hold up and had that have been on that yeah I, I would be i'd be far happier that that's something that i look at on it and it does sort of the still looks more up to the job it's a shame it's a shame about that i wish that that looked like that i really do but if that's all i've got to moan about then um they ain't doing they ain't doing a bad job let's put it that way Let's go and chop some bushes. So here we go. This is the From Cold start test. Which one is going to be quicker to get to the bush and start chopping? Obviously, we've got to prime the fuel upon the steel. The Milwaukee's, look, the strap's going on already. I'm still priming fuel. Flip that blade round on the steel. The Milwaukee's going to the bush already, though, look. Wambo, it's there, chopping away. No smoke, no noise, no warming up. We're straight into the cut. Now we're firing up the still one, giving it a few tugs on there. Got the choke on. Oh, look at the smoke coming out of that. The old two-stroke chuffing away. I mean, it's a beast, but it's noisy, it's smoky. Look at me, I'm getting covered in it. I'm going to stink of fumes after I've finished. But we're off. There we go, chopping away. So with the still one, I still need the ladders to get on the far side. Am I going to need the uh, ladders with the Milwaukee? That's the question. Will that extended pole make a difference? I mean, I'm up there and it's working. Look, I can, I can get most of it, but uh, to get right over, it's a real stretch. You know, I've really got to stretch over to get to the far side. Another meter would make an all the difference. That's at maximum reach there. So, how are we going to get on with this extended pole? Will it make a difference to that? I suppose the other thing is, what's it going to do to the weight of the machine? Because it's going to make it so much longer. Is it going to make it unusable? So we just crack off the, the quick lock. Press the button. Pull it out. Get the extender. Oh, that's a beast, isn't it? <laughs> I must apologise for some of the wind noise you're getting. It was a really blowy day, and even with the muffler on the mic, I'm still getting some um, some dodgy sounds coming out with the uh, the wind noise. So I apologise for that. So even with the extended pole on the end of the Milwaukee, you couldn't get a view from ground level over the top of the hedge to see what you were cutting. So even though we got the length. I still couldn't get my eye line in the right place, which makes sense if you think about it. But look what I can do with that. I can get right across to the far side of that hedge. That hedge is about seven feet deep. It's massive. And uh, I can get right across to the other side of it and, uh, and trim it. So it's really, really good. And I'm not leaning over the side of the ladder. So let's see how it behaves on a run down the garden. I just want to walk straight down the garden just holding it and get a nice clip all the way down it's a right ball like I'm to move the ladder down the garden get on it and trim and if I could just do this run down there like that and it get everything 
it saved me a whole lot of hassle. Make the, make the experience of cutting the hedges uh, yeah, far better. And looking at that, it's doing a really good job. It's doing a really good job, look. I feel like a tractor with a flaming arm on the side of it. <laughs> I can just walk down there, holding it up, just chipping away as we go, look. Look at that, flattening that down as we go down. It's really nice. That's a good run of hedge. That, that run there is about 60 feet. So there's plenty of hedge to go out there. It's, uh, and it's done it no problem at all. So we've made light work of the blossom tree and then we can uh, have a bit of the conifer as well look and there's some nice thick branches up there yeah straight through them no problem at all whack down the conifer got an olive tree which it's obviously going to uh, and some of the fine stuff if the blade's no good it, you struggle with this fine stuff so although it looks easy to cut through if it's uh, if it's not sharp and not cutting correctly you make a right mess of this but it's cutting through it really nice making a nice job and we can rotate that head round which saves us having to keep changing the blade angle that's not bad at all is it delightful it's got a length on it that looks nice doesn't it right let's see how it gets on with the uh, some thicker stuff this is still on the full extension so I've got the whole thing on a the whole massive long pole Oop. and uh, let's try some big branches up there see how it cuts through Once again, there don't seem to be any loss of drive with that extended pole on there. I mean, those uh, those branches are pretty thick, and it's just chomping its way through, no problem at all. We've got a little bit of uh, bit of sway on that on it, you know, but it is quite long now. I'm not feeling at any point though is it going to um, is it going to break or sort of uh, warp. We've got a lot of strength in that pole, and look at that chomping through that thick stuff. It's great, isn't it? how high up we are as well I mean can you imagine that being on the top of a ladder trying to uh, trying to cut yourself uh, some of those branches off this one being this one here I mean that's a fair old size lot it's just chomped straight through it we've got a laurel hedge this laurel hedge has got bamboo and a bit of forsythia poking in there as well and again it ain't the problem we'll just uh, whiz his way through this just trim it down make it look nice that's the laurel hedge sorted no problem there I'll just pop this long extension off again so we just crack it off press the button pull it out same on that one that's the pole out
makes such a difference with that extension off it all of a sudden it becomes really really light and nimble really light and lovely lovely to use Yeah, let's crack on privet hedge this is a pretty big hedge as well again it's about seven foot deep yeah i'm loving how light and agile it is it's really uh it's really really light and that new sharp blade cuts through the new growth really really well it does show up a little bit how me uh my steel blade does need to sharpen because this is razor sharp and it's just going through it beautifully like I say, it's, it's really, really agile. Not getting much arm ache with it, uh, even though you're holding it up, it's, it's quite light. It's making a nice job of that. You can get that blade nice and flat to the uh, to the hedge to get a nice finish. And like I say, no stinky fumes and no, no earmuffs on while I'm doing it. You know, that was always a pain, having to put the, uh, put the earmuffs on and the, the goggles on a really hot day. It's uh, nothing worse than you know wrapping yourself up in, in PPE. I don't mind putting a pair of goggles on, but uh, you know headphones and stuff. We'll get this. This is a little box hedge, and uh, we'll see how it goes with this as well. Oh, well, as you can see, it's just uh, it's making a really nice job, and it is really agile, so we can get in there. Bit of the ivy, just trim them up those edges nicely. Battery is still doing really well, and this is the bit I was talking about getting into the wall there. The steel one, if you get it into the brick there, it bounces off and it can it can really jar it. This one's got that little protector on the end of it, so I'm feeling really confident about getting in close to the brickwork without bashing the end of it. to inside about that piece on the end the protector and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get in close to the wall and the brick and stuff like that well this goes straight in and I'm not fearing that I'm going to bash the end lock on the still it bounces back this one it just goes in I can rub it up the wall look how good that and it actually pulls the pieces into the blade that's brilliant what a great design isn't it oh I can go right into the wall look I just drag it up <laughs> Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, I like a good bit of kit. I do like a good bit of kit. That piece on the end there, it's, what a great bit of design that is. Well, was this uh, way down these big hedges again? We'll do all down the side. You can see that uh, bringing it up and levelling it all up nicely, all ready for the new growth to come through. Massive runner hedge done, two bars, not bad, one bar for all of that, that's good isn't it? No stinky fuel, no stinky fumes, it's delightful, it's a pleasure. <laughs> so there we have it, two fantastic bits of kit, we've got the Milwaukee with the uh, extension pole, and uh, we've got the still tool. Both fantastic bits of kit in their own right. I think when you go, what do you buy? You've got to consider what you're using it for, definitely. If I'm at home and I want a home tool and I want something where I'm doing small groundwork, small maintenance, definitely the Milwaukee is a crack and beer kit. If I was talking industrial level toolage where um, I'm working all day out in the field, then you've got to go with the with the petrol. You've got to go with the still. Um, just the amount of uh, you know battery power that you'd need to run this all day long. 
you, it's not feasible, not really. Uh, you, you just couldn't, yeah, God, you'd have to have an absolute stack of batteries. Whereas the petrol one, it just keeps running. You just keep topping it up and away you go. But I do like the build quality of the Milwaukee. It is, it's a solid bit of kit. It's sturdy. The gearbox is slightly smaller, but it's it's well capable of what it's got to do. It is a lovely bit of kit. As far as runtime goes, on the 5 amp lithium, managed to get 25 minutes. I do love the fact that I'm not stinking of fuel and my ears aren't ringing. Um, I love the fact it's quiet and it's light and nimble. The weight difference of the two, the, the Milwaukee is definitely noticeable when you're using it over time your arms aren't as tired so obviously they've shed a bit of weight in the gearbox but maybe that's for user you know user friendliness to make it um, just that fraction a bit lighter and make it easy to use and again at home you've got all the different attachments you've got the strimmer head which is a beast um, you could go for the chainsaw attachment if you wanted to as well whereas with the steel you'd have to keep buying new bits of kit and when we're all finished with it we can just detach the head crack it off just pop it out We've got the little holder there, spin that upside down, we just drop that over the end of that, lock it round, hook it up and then uh, hang it up on the wall. Beautiful, beautiful. I've got my strimmer head, I'll pop that back in again. That's the one we use the most so that can go back in, whip that up again. Fill up nice and tight, and that's ready to go for next time. And we'll put that back up there as well. Yeah. Um, I hope that's been a use. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed doing this video. It's been a, it's, yeah, definitely for the money. The Milwaukee is a cracking bit of kit. It really is, and I'm not disappointed at all. I'm really, really impressed with it. I love some of the features. Um, I put all the links in the description for the bits of kit and uh, drop me some comments i'd love to know your comments on this and yeah set me a thumbs up like subscribe thanks for watching